Welcome SQL friends. Okay, so I'm working with a customer and we're having conversations about high availability disaster recovery. And one of the things we have to cover is availability zones and how they affect Azure SQL and Azure SQL Manage instance. So that's exactly what we're going to do today on Tales from the Field. Yeah, wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. If this is your first time finding your way over to Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Monday, we have our MS Tech Bits. On Tuesday, we have our Azure Data Community Roundtable, where we feature content from the Azure Data Community for the Azure Data Community. And then on Wednesday, we have another MS Tech Bits. These are videos where we share content that we've created in working with customers, uh, getting inspired by you, the community, uh, working with a product group, or anything else. Uh, so let's get over that great content. And what we're doing today is we're starting with some of our documentation because as I said, I was working with a customer. We were talking about high availability and naturally in Azure, we have to talk about availability zones. Availability zones are an incredible concept and it's an incredible feat of engineering. So to understand this, I want you to put your DBA hat on and we're talking always on availability groups for your Azure region. Who wouldn't want that, right? We're going to make this look like an always on availability group where availability zones are replicating to each zone, but it's actually a little more complicated. We're going back and forth to one another. So we've got three copies of your data sitting anywhere, but in order to do this, you've got to select this on your service. So it's important to make sure that we first know what regions support availability zones. We've got you covered. And again, all this documentation is in the description of the video. So I can see for Azure SQL database, do we support availability zones? And across the board, except for basic and standard, the answer is yes. Do we have this functionality for Azure SQL Manage instance? Once again, the answer is yes. This was recently added into preview for general purpose. So the next thing we need to know is, how do I select this? For Azure SQL Manage instance, I'm in my Azure portal. And when I create an instance, this is where I'm going to need to configure this. Now to do this, I'm not going to go through and build this all the way. I'm just going to make a test resource group, and then I'm going to make a managed instance named bball test. But I go and I configure my managed instance. I can see zone redundancy is off, but it's pointing to an error. I need to make sure my, my storage is actually redundant. And you can see the backup storage is not enabled for geo redundancy. So what do we got to do? Let's scroll down a little bit to where our storage configuration is. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pick a zone redundant option. We've got multiple there, but I'm going to go with geo zone redundant backups. I scroll back up and now I see everything's configured and I can select zone redundancy for my SQL manage instance. Now let's go over to Azure SQL database. So we're doing the same things. I'm configuring a new database and what I'm doing is I'm just going to make a test one. Now, the key thing here is when I select a server, I have to make sure it's in a region that supports availability groups. So there's nothing else I need to change, but I am going to change the storage to be zone redundant just to match the setup that we've got. Um, I, once that happens, I go over and I click configure databases. Now in here I can see I've already got zone redundancy. That's because Azure SQL databases, the OG, had zone redundancy long, long ago. Uh, hyperscale, general purpose, business critical, we've got you covered. So all you have to do is come in here, click configuration, click yes, I want to make this database zone redundant, and there's that Azure magic. Now I know what you're thinking, do I need this if I'm a developer? Well, that's a really great question, and maybe. This is what you need to think about. If you work in a shop and your developers can't use development level databases and it gives you downtime and that's a big impact to your business, then you might need some level of high availability or at least zone redundancy for your developers. Development ones, this is an internal discussion where you have to figure out that SLA. All right, sound off. Anything you didn't understand, any questions you've got, anything you'd like us to follow up on, we love hearing from you. Thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. Um, take care and be good to one another. Bye, everybody. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day.